Making these precast concrete ribs was an epic task spanning a lot of time in two videos. For the video on the rib design and form construction, click here. This video starts with unpacking these first two ribs. They weigh about 5,000 pounds each and I needed to get them out of my garage so I made brackets from rebar and I jacked them up. I spread their weight over a bunch of moving dollies and I towed them back with my truck. About one quarter of the dolly's wheels exploded each time I did this, but it worked. Repeat for the second rib. Once the ribs were outside, I still needed to get them off the slab. For this, I had to hire a crane. And while the crane was there, I also had them put up the 800 pound steel compression ring that the ribs would eventually sit on, and then they welded it in place. It was time to reset the forms for ribs 3 and 4. I started by cleaning and repairing them. I tried painting these worn out bits and I also had to completely redesign the spandrels because the original tapered design didn't come out as easily as I'd hoped. The silicone caulk we'd used the first time was also a hassle to get off the floor and the forms, so Sherry put down Play-Doh to seal the edges this time. We can see the kids rolling Play-Doh snakes for us. And then it was time for rebar. My sister Bonnie came to help with this set. It took us all day, and the kids helped by snipping lengths of tie wire for us. The concrete was poured along with a floor because I thought I needed the pump truck, and I didn't want to pay for it to come a separate day. Aaron and Ryan and his son Carter came out to help. Unfortunately, the pump truck wastes a lot of concrete, so it looked like we wouldn't have enough, and we had to add some rocks to bring the volume up. We vibrated them in nicely. With the previous practice and the brackets already made, moving this pair out was much easier, but the process of taking off the forms, jacking up the ribs, and rolling them out still took all day Saturday. You can see the multicolored Play-Doh came off much more easily than the silicone. A few days later we came back to reset the forms. I worked on the rebar for Rib 5 until well after dark with nothing but flashlights. I quickly finished up the fifth rib and started on the sixth. I used these scissor jacks to help me spread and wrangle the rebar. This time I decided to weld the rebar, especially for Rib number 6. This is because rib number 6 was the rib between the kitchen and the mudroom and would need a notch cut out of it for a pocket door to slide into. I cut 4 inches of rigid foam to add to the mold and then I added a bunch of extra reinforcing bar and welded that in too. And then I opened up the form and I trimmed away the stirrup so I could slide that internal form in. Another afternoon and the crane came back to get the second pair of ribs off the deck. It was time to make some more pattern molds to use as form liners. I used a backboard the same width as the rib mold, and then I drilled holes in it so it wouldn't trap air bubbles. I set down the styrofoam ceiling tiles and taped them in, and then I mixed up a polyurethane liquid rubber mold, Polytech 7575 to be specific. Mixing this stuff well is critical, or you'll have small portions that don't cure well or are too sticky. Mistakes were made, lessons were learned, more detail on this on the website, but I had the process pretty well down by the end. For this next poor day, I had no more other reasons to have a pump truck out, so I decided I would just have a mixed truck out. The truck turned out to be just a few inches shorter than the Quonset hut, and the driver was able to pour all the concrete directly into the mold. No buckets or wheelbarrows necessary, and it was the easiest pour yet. Give it a few days to cure, and we were back to get the ribs out of the forms, jacking them up and rolling them out. I had finally purchased a nice wet polisher online but it didn't work properly, so I used a bucket drilled with holes to add water on, this, on the surface. That sort of worked, and eventually I decided to stop and see if I could fix it properly. After taking it apart, I found one piece was badly made and needed to be drilled through properly, and then the water would flow. Uh, with the polisher actually working, the work proceeded much more quickly. That board in front of me is to keep the concrete from coating my ankles. 
This time I polished the ribs that were still sitting on the slab. It was taking me several hours per rib for the first side. I did multiple passes, first with a diamond cup wheel and then with successively finer diamond polishing pads, 50 grit, 100 grit, 200 grit. I also had a special round corner bit. I finished just as the crane pulled up to flip these first six ribs for me. First we flipped the four that were out on the dirt, and then they moved the two new ones off the slab, flipping them along the way. The crane operator said he could reach in and get ribs from the slab even if I finished the Quonset hut. Here is some regular speed video. The coolest part was when the heavy ribs would just drag through the dirt like a plow. Being there, you got a real sense of the mass of these things. Once they were up in the air, it was fairly easy to move them around though, and I was impressed then with the strength of the straps. Once those were flipped, it was back to polishing the other side. By now I'd also poured the kitchen rib columns, and the forms had shifted and lifted while we were doing that, so now I needed to shave off an inch to get them right again. I ended up cutting around the edges, and then chiseling off the middle, and then polishing it down to the final height. Back to rebar work, I was pretty tired of it by now, but pretty good with a rebar bender. I used it to make stirrups and tighter bends on the longer pieces. I liked welding that previous set, and I really liked how it stiffened up the rebar assembly, so I did it again here for the fourth set. I stayed late and got it all prepped for the following morning. Again, we had just the mixed truck drive in and pour the concrete directly into the forms. You can see that he just barely cleared the inside of that extended Quonset hut. We also ordered extra concrete to fill the groove that the Quonset hut was sitting in. Aaron and Sherry smoothed out the concrete while I cleaned up the form braces, etc. But after they left, I gave it one more smoothing pass, and then covered with rigid insulation to protect it from the cold. Again, after letting things cure for a bit, it was time to unpack those ribs and move them forward so we could reset for ribs 9 and 10. Sherry helped me get the long bars in, and then I was on my own for tying the stirrups and welding. It took me about 8 man hours per rib. Then the crane came back to help me set up those kitchen ribs, and to take the new ribs out of the Quonset. Finished up rib 10, welded everything, and then called for concrete and Aaron. After pouring the ribs, we also poured little blocks around the base of the kitchen ribs so that they wouldn't be knocked over. Again, we unpacked Jack to move these ribs. Uh, with the crane coming out to remove this fifth set, we also had them set up the four ribs on the quad deck. These each had a number 5 rebar peg and a recessed space on one end, and then would be welded to the steel ring on the other. The weather was great for it. The job went out without a hitch, and we also pulled out the new ribs to clear the Quonset for the last one. It felt great to be setting up the last form. However, the weather was so cold that the rebar kept snapping. So I brought in some pieces, and I used the heat gun to soften them up a bit. Sherry and I were now pretty good at this and could shape the 20 foot long pieces of number 5 rebar pretty precisely in less than 15 minutes each. Then I tied the last stirrups, made a few more, and we welded everything together. For this last rib pour, my father-in-law Mark came out to help. We attached the camera directly to the concrete truck and poured the last slab. For this last one, I was eager to close off the Quonset hut with an ICF wall, so I wanted that rib outside of the building, but I didn't want to call the expensive crane in until I was done polishing everything else. So, I bought 4 inch round fence posts and I just rolled it out ancient style. Once it was out, I quickly set up the ICF wall, which is another video, and eventually got back to polishing. With this set, I had bought a larger and more aggressive diamond cup wheel for that first step. It made that first pass go much more quickly and I was really happy, so I quickly ran over all the ribs. But the scratches were deeper and I discovered only later that that second pass took me 4 times longer to clean them up, and their weather wasn't nearly as pleasant. 
I had to struggle with issues like frozen garden hoses, and my wet grinder kept shorting out due to internal water buildup. Suddenly, instead of three or four hours per side, I was taking nearly eight hours. I had to take it apart and dry off and reassemble that grinder so many times I decided to film it once. I found that applying WD-40 liberally got me a lot more time before I would need to do it again. Finally, spring came and I was ready to erect those ribs. At one point a strap slipped on one and sent everyone diving for cover as it landed and shook the foundation. It actually chipped the bottom corner off, but it didn't crack the rib and that chip will be below the final floor level anyway. And the rest went pretty smoothly. Then I had the guys weld the high ends to that steel ring in the middle. Last we added the curved steel beams to the south side. These will keep the load off my window wall later. Ribs are done. The details can be found on the webpage. The house is starting to take shape. What's next?